Hey, 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 gang. Me again, one-legged miner, fresh out of the barber shop with a shave and haircut. Two bits. And today we're going to do a little follow-up on the carbide lamp, uh, since y'all liked the last one so much. And thank you for all you who sent carbide lamps. Uh, they're definitely going to be worked into the display here. There's museum artifacts or uh, show pieces where we let them up to take folks on carbide lamps. Tours. Most of them aren't uh, that reliable anymore until I get them rehabbed with the parts that we've got in order. But I did pick up this little one here recently. Um, it's an auto light and it's a newer version. Okay. Newer version of the ones that we used to use in the mines, the old brass ones. This one uh, is, is plastic, but uh, works just the same, has the same water chamber on the bottom or carbide chamber on the bottom, water chamber on the top, you know, screw wheel to adjust the water drip rate, screws on the back to attach to a helmet, and your reflector mirror, your striker, and your little lava lamp hole. So this lamp I'm gonna take underground today, I'm gonna to test it out, see if it works. And spoiler alert, it actually worked better than I thought it was going to. In fact, it, it shocked me and with just a little load of carbide, I ran the entire uh, explore back in there today with this one. So there will be more of these coming and uh, I will show off the bronze ones. I'll probably use ones like this for the touring unless I can get some of the or the brass ones rather uh, get them working a little better. I've got a couple that work but uh, most of them maybe they're 100 years old. So yeah, yeah. like me talk talk to me not the lamp. But uh, anyway, take a look at the footage here and you see what we did today walking back into the mine using this instead of my headlamp. Hi again, mine fans. It's your one-legged miner here, Ross, coming to you from inside the noonday mine today. And I know a lot of you liked that video we did uh, a couple months back on the carbide lamps. And uh, a number of you actually sent me carbide lamps, which were fantastic. I'm in the process of rehabbing several of them, and I want to do a carbide lamp tour down here eventually. But people were asking me, you know, how much light does it really produce practically? Well, take a look at our video right now. The light you see in here, the only light you see, is from this little carbide lamp right here. It's a slightly more modernized version, but still an industrial grade you know, carbide lamp you know, made for work in the mines. Got the little helmet holder on the back here, which you can kind of see when it flares up. This mine is, uh, or this lantern is working by Simple principle of uh, carbide pellets in the bottom, water in the top, the water drops into the carbide, produces acetylene gas, and it burns it through the jet here in front of a mirror. And this little lamp all by itself produces this much light. Yep. We're seeing the entire mine in here now, just with the benefit of this one little carbide lamp. As you can see, it casts about as much light at close range as my helmet light would. Now, obviously, at long distance, yeah, the uh, the Phoenix uh, 22700 uh, or whatever uh, power that lantern is with the rechargeable batteries, yeah, definitely outshines it. I think you can bounce light off the moon with that thing. But the miners today weren't interested in projecting the light, you know, 500 yards out. They're looking to light up stuff right here where they are. And this little carbide lamp is perfect for that. If I had to work down here, this is more than enough light to work. There is no flashlight coming off the camera here, no headlamp on. The only light in this whole mine right now is this carbide lamp. So, yeah, pretty good little uh, tool invented back in 1900 and it was the standard bearer for lights in these mines up through the 1930s and then some. Shout out to uh, South Africa Slim, by the way. He was one of the miners who used to work in this mine. And he left his name in several places in this mine. And he wrote that back in the day with the lamp from his carbide lamp. So more things change, the more things stay the same. South Africa Slim, 100 years ago, wrote his name using one of these. And I'm using one of these right now to read his name and look further into the mine. So this place is timeless and eternal. You gotta love it. We got the cribbing up above us. Got a huge 
stop below going down to a sub level, which <laughs> here's where the light doesn't do it justice because this thing is deep down here. That hollowed out cavern goes down there and I suspect it hits a sub level down about 50 feet down or so and that eventually connects with a 300 down below. I haven't gone down there and made the connection yet, but that's coming. And looking behind us, we have another ore pass. Looking up the ore pass here, you can see more timbering and another chute that goes up to the 100 level above us. Right now we're on the main level of the noonday, which is actually the 200 level, 200 feet below the you know, surface. So we've got the 100 level up there, that's like a 50 and a 75 sub-levels. And down below us, we've got a, a 250 sub, a 300 and a 400. And further back in the mine, we've got uh, a couple more going down to five and even six. So a lot of mine here. And this is all dug out using either candles or these carbide lamps. Shout out again for the carbide lamp. And you can see it's, it's quiet, pretty much odorless. Relatively stale now that it's burning right. And it would produce light like this for about four hours. Now that's a pain when you consider your shift down here is eight, 10 or 12 hours. That means at least once a shift, your light's gonna go out and you gotta refill it with new carbide and fresh water. But, <laughs> you know, looking up into another ore pass, climbing up to the level above, so. Working our way further back into the mine here. There would have been rail here at one time. But that's all been picked out either by the World War II uh, reclamation board or scrap metal thieves. I've heard both. I'm down here right now, literally using the same sort of light that uh, yeah, they would have been using back in World War I days. So, this area back here, I suspect, was repurposed at least one time into a, a stable or housing for a mule or two that uh, they were using for haulage back in here. So one of our plans now is to muck this out, take this uh, rock and gravel out of here, clear that space back up again. Now you'll see some more light. You can see sunlight coming down there. This is the, the main shaft of the noonday over there. It goes up to the surface at 200 feet up, and it goes down to the 400 level below us on an incline. My plans for this uh, tour-wise is to eventually open up the 300 level as soon as I get some incline ladder back in there and show people the 300 level. The 300 level is... Still pretty good. It's got some mucking and a little ground stabilization and roof support to be done, but I'll take care of that in the next year or two. And the 400 level is very small and backfilled and not worth the climb. So some nice 100 year old boards to walk over that are actually still pretty good, except for that one right over there, which is kind of a pain. And uh, let's take a look down towards the shaft for a brief second. Some of our, our graffiti up on the walls. You can read here by a carbide candlelight. There's one over here I was looking to show off a minute. Yeah. Look, it's a face. They were nothing if not artistic back in the day. I think that said Salida at one time, which would be Spanish for exit. And if we look over here, we've got KKK markings back when the KKK was a large social group like the Moose, the Elks, the Lodge, the Masons, etc. So a lot of history back in here. This place is a time capsule, but let's take a look down towards that shaft, shall we? Unfortunately, the station here was burned at one time, but it's still a good patent shaft going up. And that's just all daylight coming down from above. Now, can I get down here with a camera in one hand, a carbide lamp in another without so my ass. Well, I bet you I'm gonna, we're gonna try. Let's just set our lamp down here. Priorities. <coughs> Sorry. 
Just a little quick step down here. Perfectly safe, perfectly solid. Ah! I meant to do that. Oh, where'd that come from? Okay. Okay. Note to self, fix that. Hmm. That wasn't open before. But looking up our shaft, it's that daylight, 200 feet up the surface world. Beautiful timbers. See the rail car used to come down here. There was a manway over on that side. The collapse here. And if we come down over on this side, try to avoid. All the way down another 200 feet. And that will be open for tours in a year or two. Here's the, the rocks I slipped on because I wasn't paying attention. Let's not do that again, shall we? But eventually, again, we're going to get all this cleared out of here. That'll be another volunteer project is put an actual staircase in here, a few steps to avoid this silly stuff. Oh, look, it's Cleo the dog. Hey, Cleo the dog. How are you? We see you, Cleo. Come here. Oh, that's right. You won't cross the boards, will you? Okay, uh, Cleo's got a red light on her so I can keep track of her. And let me go up there and see what she wants. She's going to cry now because she's afraid to cross those boards. Hang on, Cleo. Cleo, of course, does not have a carbide lamp. Cleo has her own little battery-powered light with just enough red light on that I can keep track of her. I've learned the hard way that if I give her bright white light, she wanders all over the place because she can see. But uh, she's coming here to join. Hey, Cleo, sit. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Say hi to the viewers. Well, that said... I've got a couple of other folks waiting back down the drift here, so I'm going to bring them along and complete what we're doing here. This was actually a test of the carbide lamp today. It was a good test of the carbide lamp. I'm pretty happy. And I'll show you some more stuff uh, in a little bit. All right. Something else that I, I guess I need to show off, as much as uh, it kind of pains me to do something like this in the mine, but everybody always asks me, how do the miners write with the carbide lamps? How do they write on the, on the pillars? How do they write on the timbers? How do they write on the rock? Well, yeah, I can explain it all day, but I guess I'm going to break from my norm here. I'm going to show you. I'll take this piece of rock right here and go like that. Da, 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 da. Right, instant mark. That's carbide set. So the carbide lamp makes a little bit of soot. If you've ever shot competition, you probably used one of these to blacken your rifle or pistol sights. And uh, if you're old school, that is. If you worked in the old mines, this is how you'd write on the walls of that. So all the graffiti you see down here from the miners days is carbide soot just like that. And it is actually very fragile. It does not, you know, it rubs off very easily. So I will remove that one. But, um, that's how they wrote with carbide lamps. And a lot of the writing you see down here, kind of indicative of the times too, it's done actually very neatly with very neat printing or with cursive writing. Oh look, it's Cleo the dog with her own little red lamp walking through the drift. And, um, come here. Hi. Hey, what's up? You're a good dog, aren't you? Good mind dog. Good mind dog. Yeah, for like 30 seconds. Not bad, huh? Little sucker worked out well. Uh, definitely, I'm going to be more of these on order. 
And the idea is uh, one day being doing actual carbide lamp tours, at least through the noonday, and maybe into War Eagle 2, it depends. But these were the light source for the miners for a long time back in the day. And uh, be they brass or be they plastic, they work. And they work well. And I'd have no problem, based on what I saw today, relying on something like this for uh, an extended uh, deep explore. So there'll be more of these coming. In fact, there'll be a part two. Shows what uh, we're doing back in the museum area in a little bit. So stay tuned. And uh, we've got plenty more content coming. All I need you guys to do is keep watching, like, and subscribe. And uh, tell your friends if you like them. Tell your enemies if you don't. Just tell somebody. Let's grow the channel, please. I need the money. Thanks.